Diogo Curtis, that was an interesting night, but comfortable in the end for Liverpool to progress. Hello. Uh, maybe not. I think the results say so, but uh, the game was completely different. Uh, we scored a couple of goals now towards the end, and uh, when they're down to 10 men, I think they made it hard for us. They, they kept the ball. Uh, it was a good game in, in general, and uh, we're just happy to go through. How good was it that to score, though? I mean, your first goal, the equaliser, it, it was sort of, you rose to perfection. <laughs> yeah, it's important when you're down, obviously, getting that equalise uh, quick as quick as possible. And to score Anfield, Anfield Knight's always special, so happy to help the team. And Curtis, I know you won plenty of these awards last season, but how good was it for you? Because to get in the team, to play, and you were so good in this, this competition last season, so close to a goal as well. Yeah, I'm just a lad who always, you know, I just want to play. Um, you know, it's been hard, I've had an injury and stuff, but now I'm back and I'm playing games, so I've got a smile on my face. The manager has said before this match how difficult it is, you know, to, to, to give players the game time that they all want. Yeah, it's always the way. You know, we've got a big team, we've got a, qu a quality team as well. Um, but, you know, we, we, we can change the, the whole team there and play well and win. So um, that's what we do. And this start to the season, Diogo, is going so brilliantly well under a new head coach. Yes, we just have one defeat. Obviously, we're still progressing, still developing our ideas, but only by winning games you, you become better. So we are happy. And also, he calls it, obviously, a new journey that you're on as well. But obviously, you want the same result in this competition as, as you got last season. Yeah, it's, it's hard, but we want to do it again. Obviously, uh, we are the reigning champions and uh, we want to progress. Can get. <laughs> he took the assist, so thank yeah. you, thank you. Okay, well he's got a hand over the award this time. Curtis, can you do the honor? Congratulations, brother. Like, like in the goal. Yep, and pass there we it go. To me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why he always scores. Yeah. Nice one. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I know it's early days and they have had one defeat at home in the league, but but it does feel seamless, seamless. doesn't it? At it's the a moment, great way to put it. They've. Um, They've done so well. Obviously, the Forest game was a disappointment, but since then they've bounced back beautifully. And, and today they've rested a few players and got a great result, scored goals, looked dangerous, patterns of play. Long way, still, it's very early. But when you bring a new manager in that's followed someone like Jurgen Klopp, you want it to. You, I mean, it's hard to say it could have gone much better. I mean, they've been excellent. Yeah, I think just to add to that, I think when you do lose that home game against Forest and, and you think, OK, Let's see what they've got. Yeah. But it's how they've bounced back, I think, has been the most impressive. Mm. You know, he, he, he come out, he spoke really well, I thought, after the game as well. Uh, you know, he didn't, there was no sense of, you know, panic or urgency to try and change things or do something different. Uh, he stuck to his beliefs and you can see that they're all playing for him and they all want, they all believe in what he's trying to do. So, yeah, it looks really good at the moment Look, and looks very bright for Liverpool going forward. I mean, it looked good at the start for West Ham, didn't it? I mean, Liverpool contributed to their own downfall, but they took the leap. Yeah, I mean, look, obviously, they, go, they were always going to be a threat. I think, uh, you know, mentioning earlier on, you know, a completely new back four, um, which has obviously been a bit difficult. Quanta, we, we mentioned at half time, you know, the last thing he wanted, but Kilman does really well. We put him under pressure, get the goal, go 1 0 up. What they've got to then try and do, West Ham, is try and keep the keep it for as long as they, as they possibly yeah. can. Uh, keep the lead, I should say, for as long as possibly can. And he didn't, and that was sort of their downfall, if you like. And then, um, as you'll see here, but this is fantastic. Jamie went, went through it by Jota, you know, in the, in the first half. Um, you know, Great ball, but you, you can see that front post run again by Jota, and that's what gets him the goal, really. But again, poor defending. Um, I thought again by West Ham uh, and Max Kilman. But it's yes, so deceptively Jay. good in the air, isn't yeah. it? Well, what I like about this, with two goals that Liverpool scored today, and there's a desire and a hunger to score. Yeah. One here with Jota, because as soon as he played it wide, you see some players, OK, they, they run, maybe get to the edge of the box. He's getting into the danger, into that six-yard box where he knows he might score. Salah did exactly the same later on in the match. But it's a brilliant look. You were good in the air, Kevin, but the way he gets up is fantastic. Yeah. And he's brave there, Jay, isn't he? You know, yeah. Because you, you're thinking centre half's coming over the back of me, and also I've, I, you can see the goalkeeper. He's in the big yellow jersey, you see, <laughs> with big orange gloves on. You know, and you think I've got to put my head there where he hurts, and he gets, you know, he gets his rewards for it. Yeah. Um, the the penalty shout that West Ham felt they should have had for, yeah. for the handball. It's 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 very unclear, isn't it? Do you not think? Yes, it is. I think this is a really difficult. My, at first, when I first saw it, I thought that's definitely a penalty because it travels obviously a long way. 
He's got time to get out of it, but it, 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 what does it? it hits Joe Gomez on, the, on his left side and then it might have deflected onto his arm. But I don't think that constitutes a handball. There it looks more like one. So that's what the thing is. When there's, when there's no VAR and the referee's angle probably would have been pretty much seeing that, I, you think we might have got that one, but I don't think it is a penalty. Yeah. I, I, if we had had VAR tonight, you kind of feel they'd have been rocking and rolling that for about 10 minutes trying to, trying to work out though, don't you? Yeah, definitely. I think with all the sort of shouts what they had throughout the game, I mean, this one, when you look at it from here, I don't think you're thinking mm -hmm. it's an on ball. But then when you change the angle and then you come from this side, the ball actually stops when it's hit his hand and you see his hand go back. So it's however the, the referee's deems. Now, I couldn't even tell you. I've been going to them meetings for the last four <laughs> years. I haven't been in one, thankfully, this year. But... <laughs> <laughs> to see it now when I, I, I'd be still like, is it on ball? I'd be asking, don't worry. I, I, if, if I was West Ham, I'd be certainly asking for it. If you're it. West Ham, you're going penalty. <laughs> if it's given against you, you're going, that's a bit harsh. Is, that, think, is yeah, that where I, we're I at? Think, yeah, I, I think, think that, yeah. And that's the hard thing. And, and Kevin's been coaching. What constitutes a handball now? That's the hard thing. But I think because it hits him on his hip first and then hits the arm, I don't think that is a, is a handball. Do you think then there's a sense of anger, there's probably a sense of injustice on the field from West Ham that's then compounded by the fact they're behind a minute and 20 seconds later? Yeah, I, I think, but again, you can't feel aggrieved and then go away and then concede so early after half-time. You, you know, I spoke at half-time saying they want a bit more of what they've done in the first half. This is the first time really Liverpool opened them up and it was a fantastic finish, don't get me wrong, and fantastic bit of play. But you could see that the West Ham players were still aggrieved by what had happened with that yeah. ball, you know, and, and Lopetegui was actually saying what, with that call, if it was the other side, Liverpool would have got the penalty. And I think that's where his frustration probably come from tonight as well. Great play by Curtis Jones. Yeah. He, he knows exactly what he's doing there. You can see Kilman opens up his legs and just plays it around, plays it through them. Beautiful bit of plan. And the one man you want in those positions, Kev, yeah. is him. He knows where the goal is, that guy. He just knows how to finish and he finishes well. Very Lovely, natural. just side foot back on and no chance for Lucas. Uh, and then we get on to the phase where, where the substitutes are brought on. Mo Salah's brought on. He gets the third. He also ends up getting fouled, which leads to the, the red card for West Ham as well. But once the subs come on and they're down to 10 men, they just overpower them. Yeah, exactly. And that's what you've got with Salah. And, and again, it's, it's just desire. You can see him. He gets this ball. That's him. Yeah. He plays that ball now and he doesn't rest. He goes, runs past Cresswell. He's thinking, what might happen here? So I'm sniffing around. Can I get a goal? And it falls to him. That's not, that's not luck. That's desire and that's great judgment and just thinking to himself, the ball might just come out to me and I can get my goal. And it's a really difficult one, but he finishes it well. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the speed, you don't, you know, see it there in the full speed, but the speed that comes back to him. But, you know, it's Mo Salah. You'd expect him to hit it on target and he does. And it's a fantastic finish. But as, as Jamie says, hunger to score goals, get in the box. But what I would like to say too is, I think Bradley, I think he, he picks out a great, great one for, for that, that ball. And then... These are great, great strikes. I think it's really poor defending by Tadebo. Yeah. Uh, on both of these. On yeah. both of these goals, yeah. So just as you see here, Tadebo. 25, yeah. Yeah, see where he goes. I mean, he's his centre half. He's going out to the right as Cody Gakpo comes. He's trying to cover uh, Vladimir. Uh, and that, that opens up the space and gives Lucas no chance, really. Uh, and and then, this one, Jamie. Well, Cody does well. Now he's got his tail up. He's, he's yeah. playing great. Lovely bit of skill on Kudas here. Rolls him, uses his strength, then cuts inside, wants to get onto that right foot. Obviously gets a big deflection. But Tadebo, who, we, who Kevin just mentioned, he's your centre-back. Now, I can't stand this when players do this. Just look at him there. and he's, he's right side of the box. As he shoots, he just turns his back completely. You've got to stand tall. You've got to, you've got to think, I might get one in the face here. Keep your eye on him, number 25. As he comes inside, look, that isn't brave defending. I think and this is the best angle where you see there. him now. I mean, that's terrible. He's not looking at the ball. Terrible. You can't do that. I mean, we talk about his new to the league, this, that and the other. They're basics and fundamentals of defending. You know, and you've got to put your body on the line. You've got to make blocks. And going forward, that has to change. You can't do that. Whether it's 4 one 5 one, whatever the score is, that's really poor defending. Uh, and West Ham, when you, when you look at it, if, they, if they'd have left there tonight, 2-1, could have had a penalty, down to 10 men, all right, fine, we move on. Mm. Not now, surely. I mean, that, that's a comp there's now a completely different perspective on that because they've been hit for five, mm. isn't there? 
Yeah, and you can look at sort of individuals in that as well because, as as we said, you know they were in the game two one. You know, still you know they had the probably the best spell, and then they go to three one, and then Eddie gets sent off. Alvarez gets sent off with you know a rash challenge. You know, Jamie mentioned it. You know, when you're on yellow card, you can't afford to go down, go and go on your on the floor. That then sort of puts it all in Liverpool's favour, and then you know just a bit of poor defending. You know, Liverpool then were able to sort of. I've plenty of shots at go. Lucas Paul, I can remind him, you know, probably off really two really good saves from one from Cody Gakpo, uh, one from um, Curtis Jones as well. They hit the post, mm. it puts it in Liverpool's favour, and you don't want that. So that you always remember the last 20 minutes, yeah. whereas I think for 60, 70 minutes of that game, um, West Ham was, was certainly in it, Jay. Right in the game. Yeah. I mean, they had great chances. You can see a little bit of what life is like when Virgil's not there as well. Yeah. You know, Gomez and Quans haven't played probably a lot of football together. It was a bit chaotic at times. They were managing to, to keep the ball out the goal. Antonio was making a bit of a difference, made a handful of himself. And all of a sudden, once the sending off comes, it just, just changes everything. But And now they go to Brentford. Yep. And Alvarez obviously is going to be yeah. suspended as well. They've got, they've got big... Every game in the Premier League is, is incredibly difficult. That's quoting the complete obvious. But it becomes even more difficult when you've got no momentum. You know, they've got to find a way of getting a result there. Then they've got Ipswich after that. And it's, um, it, it, it's tough times right now. They're going to have to hang in there. They've got to defend better than what they have. And sometimes and almost find some patterns of players scoring goals as well. Because one thing we always... The last few years, because of the players they've got, you always felt they'd be goals. And, and you know, under David, there was always chances to score. Even at times, if it was a little bit more defensive-minded, there were still goals in that team. Whereas right now, they don't look like they're going to get those goals that they need. Arna, the scoreline looks good, but that was far from comfortable in periods of that match. Yeah, um, but this is what you know if you play against, uh, uh, if you're facing a team like West Ham. We have a lot of quality, you know they can threaten you as well. They threatened us from a set piece and scored a goal. Second half they were also threatening us in set pieces. Yeah, uh, since I've been here it's never been easy, although sometimes the result looks different, but probably that's the Premier League. Every team has some quality players and it's, it's, it's never as tight as the score uh, sometimes uh, shows. Can I ask you defensively how you felt you performed? You've talked about how good it has been. It was a little bit chaotic in times tonight. Yeah, true. But but in the end, it's so hard bringing numbers into, into your own 18-yard box. If they attack, and I think that's what we did really well, that's why we could throw ourselves in front of a few balls. Um, but yeah, like I said, they have some quality players in their team as well, and that's what they showed today, because they made it much harder for us than the 5-1 five, five looked like. But once they went down to 10 men, it, it did give you that advantage, and you did gain that control that you were looking for. Yeah, I do feel that we had most parts of the game, we had this control. I think we had, I don't know, but we had a large part of ball possession, especially first half. And the second half, we were there getting a few chances as well before we scored the 3-1 from Mo, which was a great team goal, great inside run, cut back cross, and Mo was so eager to score, so he played the ball, followed, his run, followed the ball, followed the run, and scored a great goal, and then uh, it was Cody time. Cody time. He deserved that, didn't he? Cody time. Yeah, um, he deserved that, like like the others deserved it as well, because I think uh, Darwin worked really hard as well, tried to create, but, but it was good to see that uh, Cody has such a fantastic shot, and uh, we have to bring him in those situations. But apart from that, I think uh, it was 20 minutes before the end, 15 minutes before the end, where he had a very important um, clearance in his own 18-yard box. So that's what I like to see, their quality on the ball, but they were great without the ball. There is such a hunger within this group of players. They are all so keen to play, as you well know. It makes life difficult, does it, for you at all? Yeah, but I've never worked with a group where players didn't want to play. So um, it's, it's always it's everywhere the same. Players like to play, especially if you're winning. They like to be part of a, of a winning group, and that's what we are at the moment. And, yeah, you know, if you play are at Liverpool, there's a lot of quality players. And that's a good thing for me because, um, yeah... It was a week ago, it was Cody in, in San Siro, it was Saturday, it was Lucio, and now it was Cody again. So that's what, um, that's what maybe fries them as well, to get the best out of each other. We'll see what happens at the weekend then, won't we? Let's hope uh, one of them will, uh, will be so special again. Good stuff, thank you for your time, Honor. Thank, thank, thank you. All there, Jamie, but I mean, they did have the odd scary moment in that game, did Liverpool? Yeah, there was a 20-minute spell in the second half when it could have gone either way. You know, even when they went 2-1, there was chances. Obviously, the handball, a bit of momentum was starting to change. But 
you just feel with this Liverpool side, because of the forwards they've got, something's going to happen sooner or later. And that's even with Brick Gakpo. You give him a lovely problem now. You know, he's got a couple of goals today. Joss has got two. Salah, you know, he's just goals. You know, and it just can't help himself. But there is, there's so many positives from their point of view. But you just, you look as well, it's been a, such a big night. You just rest. It's been ideal for them. You know, they're in a really strong position right now. We often talk, don't we, about their uh, attacking options, which we have done tonight. But they have midfield options as well. You know, when you look at who played tonight and Curtis Jones, who did so well last year in, the, in this fixture as, as well, he has options there that he can mix and match with too. Yeah, I, I mean, Curtis Jones, I thought, was excellent tonight. I thought he was, he was much better when McAllister come into the game. He was able to, I mean, Jamie mentioned that, you know, to step into that sort of attacking, attacking role more, and and you know get across, get so get in behind defenders as well as be able to you know to slide the balls in more in and around them box because he's got that cute little play as you've seen with that second goal for Jota. Um, so yeah, for someone of his ability now to be knocking on the door and going right, I'm ready, I'm ready to. to it was an important game for him tonight, and I think he come out with it and passed it with fly, flying colours really. They'll need all these options though, won't they? I mean, they're gonna he's gonna need them all because he. You know, they're progressing in this trophy. Obviously, they've got the Champions League as well. He's mm. going to have to mix and match them a bit. Yeah, absolutely. You've got Soboslai as well. He didn't play today. He was on the bench. They have got a lot of options in that area. It, they really have. The one, I suppose, thing is just defensively. You know, that it just shows you the, how important Virgil van Dijk is. When he plays at the back, he gives them that complete calmness. But in terms of the result tonight... It was, a, it was a fixture that you just want to make sure you get through. And to win it so comfortably with the goals coming from everybody, it just gives everyone a bit of confidence. Because when you leave it, at the moment, the hardest thing is when things are going well is leaving players on the bench, making that call. And you don't want players to get too frustrated, but the fact you've been able to bring them in, they've made an impact, you called it Cody time, it's a little sweetener for him, he'll be delighted with that. It's interesting on Van Dijk, isn't it? Just the final one on Liverpool, because it's always Van Dijk plus one, whether that's Canate or Matip when he's fit or Quanta as well. When you actually get two centre halves together, that that neither of them are used to that because they're not playing with each other because it was always Van Dyke plus one. Yeah, I mean, and that's what it's been. I think last year it was Van Dyke plus one all through this competition, you know, and you're seeing him step up in, you know, in in that in that final when he had all them youngsters around him. So it was a big call from Anaslot to put play Gomez and Quanta today as as the pairing. But, you know, they, they've come out of it. They, they, you know, it was good for Quanta to get 90 yeah. minutes under his belt. Good yeah. for Joe Gomez as well. And and he'll see that as a massive positive. Although they've had some little bits of trouble and, you know, you've seen a little bit of um, chaos in the box at, at times, which you wouldn't normally see with a Liverpool team with a Virgil van Dijk in. Yeah. Um, it, was, it, it was important that they got the 90 minutes and done really well tonight as and well. Joe's going to be a good player. Yeah. Make no mistake. Yeah, yeah. You, know, he's, he's got, you know, everything you need to be a top defender... He just needs he's just a little bit of a spell for him at the moment. That happens in, with football. So he's just going to find and feel his confidence, get back into it. I've got no problems with him. Yeah, so I've talked about his character, isn't it? And exactly. it's about him coming through this. As a young lad, you, you go through these, these these times and it's about how you come through the, the other side of it. And I'm sure with, with the people he's got around him, he'll come out with we'll come out of it the right way. Well, during that second half in particular, Julian Lopetegui cut a frustrated figure on the touchline. He's now with Julia. Yes, Eulen, you've had a conversation with the match officials after this game. Is it the penalty decision that you didn't get at the start of the second half that's frustrated you the most? No, the first uh, feeling that I have is that uh, we don't deserve uh, this, uh, this score uh, because we did uh, a lot of good things. Uh, I think that uh, we make a very good first half. They score in offside, that's why I love VR. It's the second thing that they have the same problem here in this in this stadium in the cup without VR. That's why I love because it was for offside and very clear. Um, we suffered the the first goal and after in the second <clears throat> in the second half um, I think I think that he has been one one penalty. The new rule is very clear that he the hand uh, this allowed that you put the ball in one other in your player was one ball for our player in the boss was no penalty and the next action they score okay and after uh, it's true that uh, after we we start, we we get with uh, with uh, 10 players uh, they score more goals i think that we in this last 20 minutes we don't manage well it has been a pity because i think that the players make a big big effort we have been 
into the match until this moment, uh, despite the, the decision of referee and, the, and the, the very clear chance that we had with on the score to draw the, the match was a, has been a pity. New players and good news for any new players, and of course, but um, say sorry for our fans, 6,000 fans here. Uh, um, supporting us, so he, we are very, very disappointed above all for them. You say you're apologising to your supporters. Has Alvarez apologised to his teammates and yourself? Okay, uh, it's one second yellow card. It can happen. He can't play in the next match in the Premier League. Okay, this is uh, we have to learn about this kind of situation, uh, and after. Uh, the players have to make a big effort, but sometimes this kind of difficulties uh, is on one opportunity to show uh, character in these last minutes. That's why I am very, very proud of the players that play until 60 minutes and after I think that we can do better. We can to fight until then always. Uh, we, never, uh, we never have uh, changed this. Just uh, a number behind them on 30. You can see where your favourite team is there out of all the 16. And of course, AFC Wimbledon Newcastle was postponed last night because of the sinkhole on the pitch there. So that has been rearranged for next Tuesday, the 1st of October, and it will be played at St James's Park. Uh, so Jamie and Kevin are in position for the fourth round draw for the Carabao Cup. Jamie will draw the home teams. And Kevin will draw the away teams. Give them a big swirl before you start, Jamie. Yeah. And then here we go with the fourth round draw of this season's Carabao Cup. Number two. Number two. <laughs> it's a very dramatic start, Jamie, yeah. just for pulling out number two. And that is Brentford, semi-finalist four seasons ago. As long as Frank will be happy. We'll play number ten. And they will welcome a championship side in Sheffield right. Wednesday. So Brentford will play Sheffield Wednesday. Number 11. Uh, number 11, Southampton, who've uh, been runners-up twice in this competition, last time in 2017. We'll play number 12. And Southampton take on another championship side left in, as in Sheffield Wednesday were away last time, and now Stoke this time. Southampton against Stoke. There's going to be some good draws now. Here we go. Disrespectful to the four teams you've drawn so far, Jamie. <laughs> no, they're good sides as well. Don't worry about that, Mark. Very good sides. <laughs> uh, what number was that? Very good 13. Side. This is concentrating on what you're doing. Number 13. Happy with that? Tottenham. <laughs> Excellent. Tottenham, Tottenham, number 13. Going to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Uh, and we'll play number seven. Tottenham will take on Manchester City. So the Premier wow. League champions go to Tottenham. See? We're right. <laughs> <laughs> Number 16. Number 16. So that's the tie that still needs to be played. So that's AFC Wimbledon or Newcastle. That gets played next Tuesday. We'll play number four. And their visitors will be Chelsea. So AFC Wimbledon or Newcastle against Enzo Moresca's Chelsea. Number eight. Uh, number eight, Manchester United, who were at home in the last round and thrashed Barnsley 7 0. Eric could be happy. We'll play number six. And Manchester United are at home to Leicester. So Leicester are going to go to Old Trafford. Number three. Number three, Brighton, who knocked out Wolves 3 2 in the last round. We'll play number 15. And Brighton welcome the holders. Liverpool, Liverpool will be going to the south coast there. That is a tough tie for Arna Slot's side. Was that six or nine? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Lines at the bottom, Jamie. Pre <laughs> number nine. So Preston, are, and also number six has already come out. <laughs> all right, all right. So Preston going to Deepdale. Ah. Uh, Number 14. Number 14. Preston will take on Arsenal. Mm. And that leaves us with two left There's in. only one left. <laughs> <laughs> Number one. Number one. Aston Villa. So Una Emery, whose side went to Wickham in the last round and one, they get a home tie. And going to Villa Park, 
Number five. Crystal Palace. So we end with an all-Premier League tie. Aston Villa against Crystal Palace. Tottenham Manchester City is obviously the one that stands out. Great draw. Yeah, they've had some good games over the years, haven't they? Tottenham had a good, re good record against them as well. So, um, yeah, they picked a, did Manchester City won there in the FA Cup, I think, last year? They, they played in early in the round, so, yeah. Well, and also, it was that game at, right at the end of the season where... Well, uh, I think also Pep's come out, hasn't he, and said he's going to obviously rotate the squad, so that'll be interesting to see how Ange goes, uh, whether he'll go stronger. Um, I think Spurs have got to go strong. I think now this is a, this is a big opportunity and everyone's going to be, think, well, there's two good sides. One of the sides is obviously going to go out. So, yeah, good draw. I think we did all right there, Kev. OK, well, let's... Uh, <laughs> you well, let's see pat, them, yeah. let's see pat themselves on the back. Yeah. Let's just show you uh, the draw. Um, uh, those first two ties that Jamie liked so much, Brentford against Sheffield Wednesday and Southampton against Stoke. Manchester City go to Tottenham. If Newcastle get past AFC Wimbledon, that will be a belter at St James's Park as Chelsea go there. All Premier League ties between Manchester United and Leicester and Brighton and the holders, Liverpool. Preston are at home to Arsenal and Aston Villa will take on Crystal Palace. And remember, all of those games, when they are played the week commencing October the 28th, you will be able to hear on Sky Sport, or able to watch rather on Sky Sports Plus. Let's. I know. I'm doing TV today, just so you know. Oh, that's what all those cameras are for, right?